Tariq Ramadan said it's going to take time. How much time, ladies and gentlemen? I don't think we have time. And I would beg uh, Professor Ramadan to go around the Muslim world explaining to women in Saudi Arabia they can look forward to freedom in 600 years' time. And that gay people in the Muslim world can look forward to having their hey, first meaningful so, relationship six centuries from now. Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video where Douglas Murray was confronted by a leftist professor on Islamic values. Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Douglas Murray has never been one to shy away from hard conversations. In this video, he engages in a debate about the superiority of Western values as compared to values in Islamic countries. This is not to say that Muslims are bad people, but that Western societies governed by Judeo-Christian values are a better place for people to live in as compared to the alternative. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Um, I hear certain of the words in the motion. Um, uh, we say that we shouldn't be uh, reluctant uh, we should be, to uh, uh, assert the superiority of our values. Um, superiority is, uh, I think, the troubling word uh, we've all got here, and a couple of my predecessors have already mentioned this. Um, you don't have to go very far in Britain or the West in general at the moment uh, to find people's uh, unwillingness to assert the superiority of their values. But they know the superiority of their values because they live with the superiority of their values. Um, I talk at a lot of campuses and I was at one last night in London uh, where a student got up and uh, started protesting because I had said that uh, an Islamist government was of itself a bad thing, which I think it is. Uh, I just said to this student, and it's not a hard question uh, you'd have thought to ask, I just said, well, name me one Islamist government state that you would want to live in. And this is a serious question, ladies and gentlemen. It is also a personal question, and one which, if people were honest, they would admit is personal. As a gay man, there's not a country that's run by Muslims which I could live in. One of my best friends is in hiding again tonight, Dayan Hasiali, because of what she says, and she'd be killed if she went to any Muslim country. And I think that matters. And I think the way in which this affects our personal lives does matter, and we should not ignore it. We have the great blessing of living under this system. And we take it for granted, and we spit on it, and we can because we're living in that freedom. But I beg you, ladies and gentlemen, not to pretend that that means that we shouldn't assert the superiority of that system, because that is what it is. It is a superior system. During his participation in debates and public discussions, Douglas Murray often challenges his audience to consider the practical implications of ideological beliefs. His question to a student about naming an Islamic state they would prefer to live in is not just rhetorical. It serves to highlight the tangible differences in the quality of life and liberties between Western countries and many Islamic states. Western values are rooted in the Enlightenment principles of rationalism, skepticism, and the quest for scientific truth. These values have fostered environments where freedom of speech, gender equality, and the rule of law are not just ideals, but everyday realities. For example, Western societies generally offer greater protection for the rights of women and minorities, freedom of expression, and religious tolerance than many Islamic countries. According to the World Bank and various human rights organizations, countries that embrace these Western values tend to rank higher in measures of democracy, economic freedom, and overall human development. Reports from Freedom House, for example, consistently show that Western democracies score higher on indices of political freedoms and civil liberties, contrasting sharply with the scores of many Islamic nations where such freedoms are severely restricted. Other public intellectuals, such as Sam Harris and Ayayan Hirsi Ali, have also voiced similar criticisms. They argue that the failure to criticize the oppressive aspects of Islamic governance out of a misplaced sense of cultural sensitivity is itself a betrayal of the liberal values that many Western societies cherish. Harris, in particular, emphasizes the need for honest dialogue about the consequences of different cultural practices, pointing out that tolerance of intolerance is a dangerous paradox. I would just like to remind voters about the motion itself. As you said, it's not about whether Islam is superior to Christianity. It's not about Eastern and Western civilization. It is about whether it is a good thing to assert Western values. Um, the tradition that we have had for so long of telling everyone how much better we are, forcing our cultures on other. And I think the key words here are afraid and assert. 
And I would argue that we should indeed be deeply afraid of this Western conceit and arrogance and see in it the Achilles heel of an otherwise remarkable Western civilization. There is so much we have achieved. And I, uh, contrary to what uh, Douglas was saying, I did in my speech very much celebrate our achievements in economics, in, uh, in freedom, in politics. But this is the dark side. This continual ability that we have to assert our values violently and non-violently on others. And it is this, I think, that the debate centers on. It's not about Islam, as the lady said so rightly at the back. What about Buddhism? What about Confucianism? All these other systems. I think the key one has to bear in mind uh, is um, for all that we have to be proud of the West, I believe it is in the arrogant and forceful association of the superiority of Western values that we have consistently undermined all that is most precious in our civilization. Douglas Murray is about to offer a powerful response in a moment, but let me first quickly highlight something important. Douglas Murray's argument is not merely about cultural superiority, it is about recognizing and defending a system of values that has proven its ability to provide the highest standards of freedom and prosperity by urging the West not to be reluctant to assert the superiority of its values, Murray is calling for a robust defense of the principles that allow societies to thrive through innovation, debate, and continual self-improvement. This discussion is essential in today's globalized world, where the clash of values can sometimes lead to significant social and political tensions. Recognizing the benefits of Western values and advocating for them is not just about asserting superiority, it's about promoting a proven framework for human rights and societal well-being across the globe. Mr. Dalrymple did, however, um, just make an allusion there. He talked about the West's uh, virtues. He talked about it being rich and productive. He did not focus, for instance, or even mention the fact that it is also free. I think this matters, ladies and gentlemen. He was counting the amount of money you make, not the virtues of your life or the values of your systems or the rights that you enjoy. Um, I'm quite uh, loath, in a way, to mention uh, Iraq, but somebody just did. This is usually the moment to which I start to lose the debate. But um, uh, I would, since most of you voted anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, the, uh, 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 the Iraq uh, would indeed be a much better place if the parties of God were not killing our secular friends and allies there. And I think it's a grotesque thing to hold the West and Western values and liberty and freedom and democracy and the rule of law. Blame them for religious fundamentalists blowing up our secular allies. And I hope you noticed that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and why, why we compare them with Muslim values, I agree with the lady. We could have focused on, on Buddhist values. We could have focused on any other types of values. The reason why it kept on coming back to it is, as you know, because this is the matter of our time. And it is not hard at the moment to notice the calls for the different type of societies that people want to create. And that there is a clear difference. And I hope, ladies and gentlemen, when you vote for the right side tonight, you make this clear. There is a difference between the Western states, which practice their own values that we sometimes mistakenly call Western values. And yes, we should call them them liberal values, and yes, we should call them universal values, but we identify them with the West because they came from the West, because they were nurtured in the West, and that they are hopefully, I hope you will agree, asserted by the West and believed in by the West. We are the people that can spread this. Thank you. Wow. What an interesting debate, as we can all tell. Uh, Douglas uh, is someone that is very articulated, always honest, sincere, always stand by the truth. He's not afraid to say the truth. We have seen that in this video. I think Western value, we can tell, has a lot to give. Just like we talk about countries that practice the Western values, we can all tell that living in such places, uh, you feel more free. You feel more comfortable as compared to living in other countries that doesn't uh, accept the Western value, most especially Islamic countries. There are a lot of things that uh, you can do in the West that, believe me, is impossible to do that uh, in some countries like Islamic countries. So just like uh, Douglas have stated, the freedom that, uh, they, uh, that the people living in the West are enjoying uh, it's very difficult uh, for those that are living in Islamic country to enjoy such freedom. Just like we can tell in UK and every other Western country, uh, freedom of speech is something everyone has. Uh, has. You have the right uh, to say whatever you want to say. You have the right to express yourself however you want to express yourself. 
you have the right to critique whatever you want to critique that you are not okay with. But believe me, such freedom cannot be gotten uh, in some countries, most especially uh, in Islamic countries. That's why I believe uh, uh, British value, which we all understand our uh, uh, British identity is rooted in its uh, culture, is rooted in its identity, is rooted in its value system. So I believe uh, there are other countries like uh, uh, Islamic countries that the freedom that people come to the West, come to UK, come to other Western countries and live freely. There are other countries that they will enjoy such freedom, just like we know right now, uh, currently right now, most of the debates that Douglas always engage in, he always talk about uh, that living in a Western society that you have no right not to be not to be offended. You have no right to resort to violence when someone says something against you or against your religion or against the founder of your religion. That you have no right not to be offended because everyone have the freedom of speech to express themselves however they deem fit. And I believe such freedom cannot be gotten uh, in, 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 in some other countries like Islamic countries. I believe that's the point uh, Douglas is trying to uh, uphold in this debate. I believe Britain and other Western countries like uh, UK uh, promote uh, freedom of speech, promote multiculturalism uh, to allow people to come into their country in order for them to be able to uh, integrate effectively. But nevertheless, I still believe uh, you coming into a country, you are supposed to adjust yourself. You are supposed to uh, uh, adjust yourself to be able to accommodate uh, the host country's culture, to be able to accommodate the host country tradition, to be able to accommodate the host country value system. You don't have to uh, come into a country and try to impose your own culture or impose your own belief on the host country, but rather you are supposed to adjust yourself to be able to accommodate uh, uh, the host country's culture, the host country belief, the host country value system. And I believe so, just by the point and the fact Douglas have stated. And for the point regarding uh, the West imposing their culture, imposing their belief, imposing their value system on, on, on other countries, I don't really believe that is true. I believe... Uh, Islamic countries like uh, Afghanistan, like Saudi Arabia, like Iraq and the rest, I believe it's left for you to uh, accept uh, 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 Western values or not to accept Western value. The West are not going to uh, force you to accept their own value, are not going to force you to accept their own belief, are not going to force you to accept their own uh, culture. So it's left for you to as, uh, uh, come up with a culture that is suitable for your people. But we all know that Western value is something that is very rich. And for the fact that you can come to the West from any country, maybe you can come from an Islamic country, you can come from even from Africa, from any country, you can come live in the West and you still get that freedom where by no one is going to uh, question your action, no one is going to question your belief as far as you are able to abide by the Western values, by the Western culture, by the Western uh, 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 value system. I believe that's the point Douglas Murray is trying, to, uh, is trying to prove in this video. We all know that there are a lot of countries that you can't go and live in such countries because of the country law and at the end of the day, you, you won't feel you won't feel comfortably. Just the other day, I was watching watching a video where uh, uh, a Muslim scholar was uh, was uh, promoting Sharia law in UK. He was saying that he wants Sharia law to be uh, legislated in uh, in the UK. I don't really know much about Sharia law. I don't have the qualification to comment on it. But based on the Muslim scholar, he made some certain points that countries where Sharia law is practiced that there are more peace in those countries, that there are less crime rates in those countries. And he gave some quotes about the Sharia law, which he mentioned that according to the Sharia law, if you commit adultery, that you are supposed to be stoned to death. If you commit fornication, you are supposed to be uh, flog 100 latches of, 100 strokes of cane, uh, latches of cane in public. And there are also some other uh, crime he noted that if 
you are a Muslim and you decide to leave the religion, that you can be killed for that, which I believe uh, that is totally unacceptable. And we all know Western values, Western culture is totally against that. So I believe if you are coming to a country to reside in uh, that country, you ought to respect the country's culture, you have to respect the country's belief, you ought to respect the country's value system. You don't have to come into a country and try to impose your own culture or impose your own uh, value system on the country. I believe that is totally wrong. I've learned a lot just listening to Douglas and the other speaker. So I also love to hear your comments. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.